Welcome to the final part of the segment on synchronization. Today we're going to talk about deadlocks and we'll first define what they are, why they occur, how can we prevent them, how can we detect them, and how we can probably avoid them. Uh, deadlocks are fundamental um, to locks and so they, anytime you use lock for mutual exclusion, um, there's a possibility that deadlock uh, may happen if you don't program in the right manner. And so it's extremely important to understand them and try to look at how techniques to avoid them. So let's start off. So in general, first, before we get into how deadlocks can happen, we have to first kind of understand resources. So deadlocks normally occur on resources and they occur on specific types of resources. So let's take a look at two kinds of resources. First, we'll start off with preemptible resources. So we'll start off with what we mean by preemptible resources and then take a look at non-preemptible resources. So preemptible resources are resources that can be taken away from a process. Okay, so if a process has asked for some resource and it's holding on to it, then at some point you can if you can take it away from it, take it back without um, affecting the process, then that's known as a preemptible process uh, resource. An example of this is memory swapping. So you can make a, you can vend out some amount of memory uh, to a process, uh, but at the same time you can take away that memory, make a copy of it on the disk, and actually take that physical memory and then give it to another process. And when the other process is done, you can then give back the memory to the original process. So this is an example of a preemptible resource and uh, you can also think of them as reusable resources. These are generally not involved with deadlocks because with deadlocks normally the situation is that you hold, you obtain a resource and then you hold on to it uh, while a resource that you need is held on to by someone else and then someone else um, you hold a resource for this for the other person, other uh, thread or process. So, if you have preemptible resources, then this generally cannot occur because you can always take away a resource from a specific thread or process. Non-preemptible resource, on the other hand, um, in they are the right, exact opposite of preemptible resources in that they cannot be taken away from a process. Uh, examples of these could be physical resources such as a C, uh, CD or printer, um, a disk. Um, essentially, if you take the resource away from the thread of the process, then you kind of land up with gobbled up data. You don't you land up with gibberish essentially. So in some ways, you got to protect the resource to start off with. You can't vend it out and then halfway along the way say that oops and then take away the resource back. That's, uh, you can't do that. So you need a way to essentially protect the resource even before you give it out. Right? And so that's an example of mutual exclusion as an example of a strategy to protect the resource and make sure that um, you don't interfere with each other. Two processes don't interfere with each other on the resource. Uh, requesting processes may be forced to wait or request the process resource itself later. So when you want to deal with non-preemptible resources and uh, you find that another process is holding on to the resource that you care about, then you'll either be forced to wait or uh, you'll have to come back later. You cannot take it away from the other process. And in general, when there are multiple resources, any form of sharing of these resources between the threads leads to a possibility of a deadlock uh, in certain cases. So let's look at what is a deadlock. Simply put, a deadlock is permanent blocking of a set of processes that share multiple resources. So essentially the system cannot make any progress because you have threads of processes each having resources that the other process wants. Okay? And all of these resources are non-preemptible, which means you cannot take any of the resources from one of the threads in order to satisfy the other one so that overall the system can make progress. So in the conditions that this occurs under are 
each process is waiting for a resource that only another process can make available. Unfortunately, with non-preemptible resources, you cannot take away the resource from another process. Okay. A typical deadlock, an example would be two processes and two resources. So you have process A using resource 1 and waiting for resource 2, and process B using resource 2 and waiting for resource 1. Neither of these can proceed at this point because each one is holds on to something that the other one wants. So let's say that you had process A and you had process B. And so process A is asking process B for resource 2 uh, and process B is asking process A for resource 1. Now you have a cycle. Neither of these threads can make progress as each one is holding on to the resource of the other one and is not willing to release it. So in this case, process A is holding on to resource 1 and process B is holding on to resource 2. There is a subtle, there's a major difference between starvation versus deadlock. Okay, so let's just concretize further before we move on. So with starvation, threads do wait indefinitely. So an examples of uh, this could be low priority threads waiting for resources constantly in use by higher priority threads. Deadlock is circular waiting for resources. So you have the case that the system cannot make progress because each one is waiting, each process is waiting on the other one. So deadlock may lead to starvation. So if you have a circular waiting of resources, it may lead to a thread waiting indefinitely, but not vice versa. So deadlock may lead to starvation, but starvation does not necessarily lead to deadlock. Starvation can end, but doesn't have to. Deadlock can never end other, unless there's an external intervention to prevent it from happening or to recover from it. So deadlock implies starvation. Starvation does not imply deadlock. Starvation can, can end, but deadlocks need external intervention. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples of deadlock uh, using real-world examples. In the first one, we look at a bridge crossing where you've got lanes on either side. You've got lanes going in, op each other in the opposite direction, and you've got a kind of a plan bridge. So each segment of the road can be viewed as a resource okay and cars must in order to travel on them must own the segment under them so the one they want to travel on they should own it so the way you do that is by essentially acquiring a segment before moving so in this case the green card has obtained segment going in this direction and the, this one has obtained the same one going the opposite direction for a bridge to work i kind of need to get both halves right so traffic only in one direction at a time and the problems occurs when two cars in opposite directions on the bridge. So this one kind of obtained this lane going in this direction, and this one obtained the lane going in this direction, and neither of them can use the bridge now. Okay. Um, obviously, in this situation, one possible solution is if one of the uh, cars were to back off. Right? If this were to back off, then this resource is going in this direction that it acquired, can now be flipped over and now you have both pointing and this guy can make progress. And once he finishes, then the other one can take control. Except that there are subtle issues that just when he wants to back up, what about this guy? So he backs up, he has to back off, and then he has to back off. Uh, you can think of similar examples in threads as well, where you have domino effects where backing up one thread affects the one before that and so on and so forth. So it's, it's not just a simple case of one of the few threads backing off and releasing a resource. Uh, you may have to manipulate a lot of them for the system to work. Starvation is also possible. Um, if you have east going traffic happening really fast, so in this case there are more cars going in this direction than in this one, and they just keep acquiring the bridge, in which case the overall bridge goes in only one direction, and you kind of really are hose. Another examples could be trains. Uh, a non similar um, algorithm in computing system is wormhole routing. So you could have circular dependency, for example. For example, each train wanting to turn 
right. So in this case, this one wants to turn this way, this one wants to turn this way, this one wants to turn this one, and then the other way, right? And let's say they each had one bar, one track, and so each one, this one's deadlock on him, him, you can kind of see the deadlock happening. Each train wants to turn right, okay? So the way to avoid this would be um, if you force the order, right? You make sure that this cycle here cannot happen. And the way you would do that is, for example, if you said that all trains had to go only in one direction before they went. So they would all either go horizontal and then vertical, or they would all go vertical and then horizontal. But essentially, you have a global ordering on the resource request. If you have a global ordering on the resource request, then there's no way that you can land in deadlock. 